Hello and welcome to All My Art and Soul. This is Michelle Holden. And this week I thought I'd take just a quick break from all my other mixed media abstracts and everything that I've, that I've been doing. And mind you, it's still going on. And I missed my abstract art journaling pages. So you know that I like to use those when I'm uh, exploring uh, just one or two elements. Um, I still do everything else with it, but my focus is on this week. Um, I wanted to explore some marks. Now, this is just the beginning, and I know uh, these are very simple marks, but I just wanted to start uh, finding a way that I like to activate the, the the substrate, whatever it may be, paper, canvas, wood. And uh, this is the, um, the it's an 8 by 10 taped in, so I guess it would be a 9.5 by 11 mixed media Canson sketchbook. I have the larger 11 by 14 as well. But I like to use these smaller ones in case it does turn out really cool, um, I like to scan the image and then use it for my all over print products. So I don't know if I've spoken enough about them. There, uh, You can find them in my Instagram, on my bio page, and you can also go to my website on my shop. So you can just check them out and uh, they're really cool. When I have more time, I'm going to be adding some more to them, to those. Now, this is just a regular pencil, and I've been thinking about this idea, like back to the art journal page, of course, and I'm seeing in my mind's eye layers of layers of marks, subtle marks, but not geometric at all. So I thought, okay, let's just start with line. And I want subtle ones that you barely can see mixed with um, thicker ones that you can tell and more pressure. So it's really still that feeling that I'm looking for. And yes, I might make more ovals or things next time. So I thought, okay, let's just try a few tools. Pencil, Posca marker, China marker, and instead of going in with the paintbrush, I went in with my, I call it my zigzag stencil, which worked okay. But I think the next page following right after this page, I'm gonna do a series of just exploring marks, layering different colors on them. But as you can see, if you stick to the end, I'm going to keep it a very a simple palette or monochromatic color palette. So I'm really liking the juxtaposition, the contrast of these with the line. And <clears throat> I need to let them dry because I'm going to go in with a very thin veiled layer of white. Uh, I want to experiment. I should have used some Titan Buff in there too, but I didn't blue. So you can see on my palette, which I really like that I've moved it over so you can really see me mixing the colors and uh, where in this palette there's really not a lot of color, but at least you can you can see that. And the colors that you see are from some previous uh, my 12 6x6 that I was working on before this and uh, they're going to be up on my video for next week. I shared uh, the start or the continuation of these and how to approach making a series and exploring layers in my Facebook group. So if you want to catch the beginning video of that, make sure to join the Facebook group. I share every Sunday. I call it Studio Sundays. And um, a lot of other members are sharing as well. So. I let it dry, and what worried me was the Posca marker. I couldn't remember if it ran or not, if your paintbrush was moist, so I'm glad it didn't. And as you notice, 
in the beginning of the video as I was talking, I put a really thin coat of the gloss medium, not the heavy, just uh, the fluid. And as you can see, I just, just swirled it on there and I wanted to seal the, I wanted to see what would happen, what would happen if I sealed that uh, pencil so it didn't uh, get smudgy. But I really like the smudgy, so next time I'm not going to, and I'm gonna seal layers further along to protect them. So then I can veil and then rub away without rubbing the layers underneath just that layer that's on top, uh, just above the fluid, the clear fluid uh, medium. So this is the Nickel Azo Gold, and it's very thin. So I was just experimenting. I just wanted a very thin layer. I could have used the blue, and I thought, okay, let's just bring that dryer in, and I'll probably wipe off. You see, if I didn't put the clear, the clear medium, the gloss medium, I couldn't wipe away uh, cleanly. And we know what paper does, right? It just absorbs everything. So that's why I did. I put a, you're putting in a block. Now I'm thinking right away, what if I just blocked half and let the, the other half or third be absorbent? I wonder what would happen to the effects. So these are the, the type, the layers and the marks that are um, I'm experimenting with. Everything's always processed with me. And um, um, I'm learning more about that. Um, I love the idea of it. And um, that's where I just, where I wanna go with my, with my creativity, with my art process. So I thought, okay, what about, I have thin lines, I have zigzag lines, and I really want some weight, as you know I'm always talking about. And I put in a really thick area of black. And uh, if you notice, the white tape is the border here. And I like that it isn't blue or yellow or distracting. Mind you, it's tough taking off, so stick to the end. And um, this page sat around for quite a while, and I knew it would give me a hard time. But the hair dryer did do a pretty good job at, as to lifting off the sticky part of the tape. So this is the deli paper. I went around searching. I have so much paper. It's just crazy. I've got to organize my studio um, and my papers and get some, some different uh, containers or I don't know what I need. Thinner trays, stack them on one on top of the other. I need shelving. You know how it is in your studio or your area um, if you're lucky enough to, to have one. I am, and I'm very, very grateful for my studio and love it. So as you can see, I chose to put it on top of the lot, the zigzag lines, because I wanted you to, I wanted them peeking through. I wanted this layer of history, and that's another thing I'm ex I'm experimenting with, marks, with different layers, different kinds of layers, different order of layers. And um, it's just never ending. So um, uh, that was, I thought of that, and it just, as you can see, it was just too heavy for this piece. And I've been, I wish, I have to find out more of this, uh, this Japanese paper. These are just scraps, and I have great big sheets, but nothing like this. And I thought, wow, what a great transition going from, from the nickel azo. I see at first I was going to put the whole piece across, the two pieces across, but I decided, no, let's just use that one long piece. It's, it's plenty. And then I thought, okay, they are the same, too much the same. So I cut it down in size just to create a difference. We're always thinking about differences. And couldn't decide which spot to put it put it in. So I put it at the very bottom. I think if I put it near the zigzag, you wouldn't have it wouldn't have uh, and then it wouldn't have made that much of a difference really. And then here I got it smudged with the black. So now I'm trying to clean it up. And very absorbent. 
you, you just breathe on it and it absorbs it. So this paper is very transparent, but very absorbent. So it's like a one-time one time deal with this stuff. <laughs> so, uh, again, some more deli paper because I'm just really thinking of transparent layers or translucent layers. See, there's that piece. I put it down. I go, whoa. So I cut it. I thought, well, maybe this will change if I, if I put it down here. And it maybe it's, no, no. And I thought of cutting even a, a narrower area a narrower band, and it just covers everything up that I like. No, nope. no. Nope. So I just put it to the side. And look at the difference there. So not horizontal, but vertical. And they're short, sharp lines. And um, so I just put those down there. And I love how you can see the layers underneath. So, um, I know I've been experimenting with this for a long time. Um, and it's so funny too, when you become clearer as to what you want and what you're, what you're doing, uh, then you, then you can, uh, I think just be more, more fluid, more productive. Sure, stuff isn't going to turn out. But if you if you have a clearer idea as to okay what is it that I'm uh, and I'm just just the tip of the iceberg now and I've been at this abstract business for oh goodness what three years now two years I forget I just keep on going and as you can see it, it I noticed that was the glue side and I didn't like that pointy corner. I want it like an organic, squarish, rectangle-ish. And I love that you can see the, the nickel azo underneath. And that piece was great, but it was too much the same width. So then I'm overlapping. And see how everything's a transition into the other, the other layer. So there's a lot of stuff going on. So I'm finally, you know, I'm finally... Oh, I don't forget the word. Um... Things are lining up. Things are falling into place. And then just that one, do I make, yes, one orange line. I'm so glad I didn't make three because there were already enough lines there. And a few dots. And liking the layers. And sometimes, um, and I'm also trying to keep, uh, to simplify my pieces. Uh, have areas of breathing room. Is, which is just as important as those complex areas of line, shape, pattern, color. <clears throat> so finding the right spot for this orange. And of course, this is the newsprint uh, rolled with, I do believe, my brayer. This wasn't on the jelly plate. Now, in my mind, I was thinking, okay, the two different oranges, should it go vertical or horizontal? Um, I almost put that in. And it, it, would have, it would have been cool, but it just was too busy, way too busy. So I thought, whoa, we'll just, we'll just put that to the side. That's not the energy that I'm looking for. And what I really needed is some text. And I love, I love, I was going to just cut the two. And then they were two that I didn't like how two with the words. And I love taking words out of context. And sometimes I care about what the words say. And uh, most of the time I do. Because words have energy. And um, so I'm just, just a little more. Uh, present as to uh, what I'm putting in and why does that look good see up high it, it was too white it didn't it didn't do anything down there works so I decided to put um, this is this is turning out to be a more symmetrical um, 
um, a composition. So I decided to use the two, and then I flipped it over and I, and, and I saw that, oh, okay. So you'll see, you'll see some of the words at the end. So stick to the end, because that's when I show an overall photo and a close-up. So you'll get to see the texture and um, all the different layers much closer up. So if you're liking this con content and you're enjoying my abstract art journaling, my mixed media abstract, please hit that like button subscribe, hop over to the Facebook group, um, and maybe grab yourself a journal and um, start just experimenting. It's really fun. Follow along. Or just sit back and enjoy and whatever you want to do. So I haven't done this in a while, too. I love the little splash with the uh, black. So I... I add different different amounts of water and different amounts of paint. I load it up to get different sizes of the splatters. And what inspired me was the paper there. So now is the big reveal. So, oh yeah, there you go. I forgot to do that with the hands. <laughs> so funny. So, after, and then it starts ripping and going, ah! I forgot to use my X-Acto knife. So, giving me a hard time, but probably I'm giving it a hard time because I'm not being patient enough. So, we've got to remember this. Patience. Patience, Michelle. Patience. So, and I thought, well, why is it doing that? Because I know the paper's only there. And why is it tearing? I forget what's under there half the time. So, I saved it. Then I decided, okay, let's get this dryer on this tape. And um, I'm um, while I'm drying and loosening the tape up, you can see that the thicker black line, I might, now that I'm looking at it, I might even added some more of the Posca marker line, a bit more. And... As I said before, this tape was on here for a while, so it is going to be a little bit stubborn. And I was thinking, too, um, has anyone tried putting a clear medium on your page first, letting it dry, and then putting your tape on? I was thinking, well, why haven't I done that? So I'm going to do that ne the, for the next page. I'm going to because I don't want to put gesso, too much gesso on it, unless I want a tooth. So I've used gesso, and sometimes I just want, I want to use the paper. But sometimes I want the paper to be absorbent. So maybe I'll do, I'll just experiment with that, with some tape. Uh, but I'm definitely on the edge where the tape is going. I'm going to put down that clear medium. And then uh, I'm going to see how much, because I know I love the yellow fog tape but I can't stand the yellow color around where I'm working, especially if the yellow's clashing with the colors that I'm using. Okay, there we go. That didn't take very long. And this little hair dryer that I use isn't the hottest, but that's okay. And there we go. So we just have a few edges. And I love how the, when the clean edge is there, and no matter what you do, it looks so nice. So... That's what I'm doing. I really, even when I'm just exploring, but if it's a, if it's a journal, a personal journal that's just for me, I, I won't worry about the tape because I won't take things to the edge anyway. Just stick to the central area. So that's this week's abstract art journaling page, exploring mark making. This is mixed media, papers, uh, handmade, stenciling, and many more layers that you can use. So here it is, the close-up, and there's even more of a close-up. You can see all the textures. So don't forget to hop on over to the Facebook group, Abstract Art Journaling Group, 
and I will see you in the next video.